So, in the last class uh, we talked about uh, this ultrasonic uh, transducer element and before that we learned about uh, these characteristics of the ultrasonic beam and then we saw there are uh, two fields or two regions along this ultrasonic beam. One is known as the near field where you have lot of fluctuations in the intensity of the sound wave and as you go away from the transducer then it becomes a kind of more uniform. So, that zone is known as far field and these two uh, will depend on uh, the size of the probe D and the wavelength lambda which can also be expressed in terms of uh, the velocity of sound waves and the frequency. So, in this manner similarly the far field is characterized by this divergence angle alpha which again depends on the lambda and d. Okay. Then we saw due to this near field fluctuations there is something known as dead zone uh, which is a distance into the sample close to the surface uh, which cannot be inspected because of these fluctuations because a probe cannot receive when it is still transmitting. Okay. So, if the vibrations are still there and by the time an echo comes back to the transducer then it will it will not be able to receive that echo okay, while it is still vibrating. So, that is the effect of a near field uh, which uh, gives rise to this dead zone and then we saw uh, how this uh, dead zone can be uh, addressed how this can be taken care. So, there are different ways uh, by which uh, the dead zone effect uh, can be addressed. Uh, one is uh, using a solder pulse or high frequency pulses. Then the second uh, method we talked about a delay version or a delay layer which will delay the echoes when they are coming back to the probe and that is how uh, this delay layer will give enough time for the probe and for the fluctuations to die down completely and by the time uh, the echo comes back the probe will be ready to receive. And the other two methods by which this dead zone can be taken care are this one is uh, using a dual element probe uh, which has two elements. One element is used as the transmitter and the other one is used as the receiver. So, in this case since you have a second uh, element which is only used as a transmitter you do not have any dead zone uh, problem in this case. Last method that we talked about was uh, through immersion testing uh, wherein you uh, can immerse the probe and or the sample both uh, inside in a liquid and since uh, in a liquid like water the velocity of water is much lower that will again delay the echoes and provide enough time uh, for these fluctuations to come down and by the time uh, the echo uh, reaches the probe it will be ready to receive them. Okay. So, this is how uh, the dead zone uh, can be taken care of and then uh, we started talking about this ultrasonic uh, transducers. I mean what are the components of a transducer and how the ultrasonic pulses are generated. So, what you do in an ultrasonic transducer you supply a single spike of uh, electrical signal and uh, you convert it into high frequency mechanical vibrations or these ultrasonic uh, pulses. Okay. So, that means uh, this is uh, a property which converts uh, electrical energy into mechanical vibration and as you all know that is known as piezoelectricity. Okay. So, the main component of an ultrasonic transducer is this piezoelectric element. When you supply an electrical signal uh, to this element it will vibrate uh, with a particular frequency which uh, depends on uh, the thickness of the element. So, lower the thickness higher will be the frequency and that is why these elements are cut out into thin wafers. And this uh, frequency uh, different frequency uh, can be generated by having uh, these elements in different thicknesses. So, this is what uh, we saw in the last class. So, today let us talk about uh, how this uh, construction is uh, for uh, this ultrasonic transducer. 
what goes inside it and then we will see how it operates. So, the main component uh, is this uh, piezoelectric element as I said. The most uh, commonly known, most uh, common uh, or most well known uh, piezoelectric material as you might all know is uh, quartz. So, single crystals of quartz can be used as the piezoelectric element uh, for ultrasonic probes. There is one more uh, material uh, which is known as PZT. Uh, which also shows very good uh, piezoelectric property. The full form of this PZT is lead zirconate uh, titanate. So, this P stands for lead PB, then Z is for zirconate and T is for titanate. So, polycrystalline uh, lead zirconate titanate uh, shows very good uh, piezoelectric property. So, that again can be used in ultrasonic transducers. So, let us see what are those uh, parameters uh, in a piezoelectric element uh, which control the mechanical vibrations. So, as I said you uh, supply an electrical signal and that is converted into a mechanical vibration. So, let us say if you supply an electrical field F, uh, it will generate a mechanical stress uh, sigma. Similarly, if you uh, have a mechanical strain epsilon, it will generate this uh, electrical signal. So, this is either way. Electrical signal can be uh, converted into mechanical vibrations and vice versa. Okay. So, let us uh, write these equations once again by introducing these proportionality constants. Okay. So, alpha and beta are the constants. So, this kind of uh, transducers uh, wherein you convert uh, an electrical signal into uh, mechanical vibrations. These are known as uh, electro acoustic uh, transducer. And these two constants uh, that we just now introduced that is alpha and beta, these are the acoustic properties of the uh, element uh, which will control this electroacoustic transducer. Okay. So, for uh, having a good uh, transmission, beta should be high similarly uh, to have a good receiver alpha should be high So, this is how uh, these two constants, these two parameters alpha and beta uh, control this uh, ultrasonic uh, transducers. So, if you have both high it is good, then in the same uh, transducer uh, you will have uh, good transmission and good uh, receiving ability. But let us see whether it is possible to uh, optimize both or to have high values for both in the same transducer. Now, if you see uh, these two are related by uh, stress and strain which are also uh, related uh, 
to each other in this fashion. And within the elastic limit, uh, this is related by Hooke's law in this fashion, wherein uh, y is the Young's modulus. Okay. Right. Now, if you replace sigma and uh, epsilon in terms of uh, the electrical signal f, uh, this is what uh, you will have. Okay. So, that means uh, y becomes this okay as you could see from here let us write that So, now uh, you could see they are uh, related to this Young's modulus in this fashion and since uh, Young's modulus is a constant, it is a material constant, you cannot optimize both alpha and beta simultaneously. Okay? So, if you increase alpha for example, then beta has to be reduced because this has to be kept constant. So, that is why it is not possible to uh, optimize both alpha and beta together simultaneously in one transducer. So, you either have to compromise with the uh, receiving ability or you have to compromise with the uh, transmission ability. But uh, for the commonly used materials, for the commonly used piezoelectric materials, uh, the values that you have for alpha and beta are enough for both uh, transmitting and receiving. Okay. So, for example, if you look at the values uh, that these two materials that we talked about quartz and uh, PZT, quartz has a large uh, beta value around uh, 58 volt uh, per meter per Pascal. Okay. But uh, alpha uh, for quartz is low which is uh, around 2.3 meter per volt. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if you talk about PZT, it has uh, very high alpha value which is uh, 374 and it also has a beta value which is high enough uh, much higher than compared to or it is not as low like what you have a very low value uh, for alpha it is 15. Okay. So, it is still uh, more than 10 and at the same time it has a very high value for uh, the alpha. So, that is why this is a very good uh, piezoelectric element uh, for an ultrasonic transducer. But uh, quad also can, can be used because uh, we are mostly uh, concerned about uh, receiving the signal uh, which is uh, coming out uh, from the sample in terms of those echoes coming back from the defects. So, if you have a good receiver and if you could ensure that you send enough ultrasonic uh, pulses into the sample, then uh, coage also is a good material. In fact, it is being used in ultrasonic transducer. So, both of these materials have you know 
good uh, properties, good uh, acoustic properties in terms of these alpha and uh, beta parameters and that is why they are uh, most commonly used uh, piezoelectric uh, materials in ultrasonic transducers. The other property uh, which is needed for an ultrasonic transducer is the damping capacity which is the ability to absorb vibration okay. because as I said before also uh, by the time the echo comes back uh, to the transducer it should be ready to receive them. Okay. It should not uh, vibrate when the echo comes back to the transducer. right? So, that means it should also have good damping capacity so that uh, this uh, vibrations can be quickly absorbed and uh, the probe is ready to receive after the transmission is over. Okay. So, that is why this damping capacity is also important uh, for a uh, ultrasonic transducer. So, PZT uh, is a very good uh, uh, damping material. So, apart from the piezoelectric uh, property, it also has good damping. And in most of the cases to enhance this damping, a damping background is provided uh, in the housing in which uh, this element is there. So, when we talk about the construction of this ultrasonic transducer, we will talk about that also. In the background you provide some material inside that casing where you place this element. Uh, which has uh, good damping property. So, that uh, within this uh, probe, within the housing of this probe, uh, this vibrations could be quickly absorbed. Okay. So, a damping uh, background can also be provided, a damping support, a damping background into that uh, um, probe housing uh, to enhance this uh, damping property of the ultrasonic probe as a whole. So, let us uh, talk about the construction of uh, the probes and then see what are the different elements and components of the UT probes. So, this will uh, this comes uh, in uh, different shapes, uh, but uh, mainly they are uh, either cylindrical or some kind of uh, rectangular shape and if you uh, take a cross section for one of these uh, cylindrical uh, transducers for example, this is what uh, you will see inside. So, the main component as I told is this piezoelectric element. So, this is the active element. to which you have two electrical leads uh, connected like this to supply that electrical signal. And then you have this inner sleeve and other things to house it properly in place. And here at the front face uh, you have uh, some protection for wear and tear. So, you have what is called uh, a wear shoe and this is the active element. These are the electrical leads. So, here on top should have a connector for electrical connection and this background as I mentioned should be uh, made of uh, some material which has high damping capacity. So, a damping a good damping background is provided in this housing. 
so that uh, vibrations can be uh, quickly absorbed after the transmission has happened so that the transducer is ready for receiving okay so this is a schematic uh, let me show uh, show you uh, how do they look like so this is uh, what they look like if you see these diagrams so this is the one that just now we have drawn so you can see the similar parts the main component of course is the active element which is now housed inside a casing like this so this is a small uh, cylindrical casing in which you have uh, all the support and the electrical lead and this uh, blue uh, area indicates that it has a sound absorbing high damping background as I mentioned before and it comes in a different kind of uh, shapes like you could have this kind of cylindrical shape or you could have this kind of rectangular shape and so on. And the other uh, aspect of this is that uh, it also comes in uh, in a particular angle. Okay. So, the ultrasonic uh, beam uh, can be sent uh, normally uh, or perpendicular to the surface to the sample or it can also be sent uh, at some angle because in many cases as we are going to discuss later uh, an incidence uh, at a particular angle is also needed because your defects and flaws can lie in different orientations they may not be exactly perpendicular uh, or they may not be parallel to the front face of the sample they can lie at an angle also so that is one scenario where you may need an incidence uh, at a particular angle then uh, you have uh, uh, these uh, welded joints uh, welded plates wherein you have a weld to inspect so there again if you have a v joint kind of thing it is always at an angle so in those cases again you have to use an angle probe okay so in order to provide that angle as you could see uh, this kind of uh, wedge is provided here. So, the uh, piezoelectric element is now uh, sitting on this wedge and this wedge is cut out at a particular angle uh, that is needed. So, this is the this will be the incidence angle for this uh, particular probe. Okay. So, this is how an angle probe is built and in this case you could see uh, there are two elements. Okay here it is only one element uh, here also it is a single element but in this case you could see there are two elements and for these two elements there are two separate connectors and two separate leads so this is the dual element probe that i uh, talked about uh, some time back uh, while talking about dead zone so this kind of probes uh, can be used when you do closed surface analysis or closed surface inspection because in that case uh, since the reflector is very close to the surface or very close to the probe this uh, dead zone effects will be prominent. So, in order to avoid that uh, this kind of uh, dual element uh, probe can be used wherein you have two separate elements one for transmitting and another for receiving. So, this is what is being shown over here. Okay, so, that is how uh, the construction is for this uh, ultrasonic probes and if you uh, talk about the test equipment. So, apart from the probe you should also have the display in which you can see that signal the defect signal and you should also have uh, a power source uh, to power this probe. So, all those things is built into a compact uh, small equipment and if you see the major components of uh, that, uh, that piece of equipment this is uh, what you will have this probe uh, we already talked about. Okay. So, this has to be connected to that uh, small box uh, which will contain the all other elements 
including the electronic circuit and uh, the power source and it will also have uh, amplifiers and things like that to amplify the signal so that it can be properly displayed in, in, into the display that the equipment has. Okay. So, this uh, probe uh, will be uh, connected uh, to a pulse generator. and this has to be connected uh, to the system to first uh, amplify the signal. So, it will have an amplifier and then you will have the display. which can show the display in terms of amplitude and the time base and this we have seen that you will have an initial pulse and then the back wall when you have a sample over here. Okay. And if there is anything in between you will see that uh, defect echo coming in between the initial pulse and the back wall signal. Okay. Right, so, all this thing uh, apart from this probe all this uh, pulse generator uh, display and everything will be built into a small compact box which will have everything like I said it will have the electronic uh, circuit, it will have the display and it will have also uh, the power source. This box itself uh, can be connected to a power source which will in turn uh, power the, uh, the probe. Okay. So, this is how uh, the system is and the major component of the system and in the next lecture we are going to see uh, how this test equipment is used to do ultrasonic testing. So, we will see the test method and different process parameters and so on. So, today I will stop here and I will see you next time. Thank you.